thank you so much. Well, thank you for letting me be here and, and chit chat and tell you a uh, lots of stuff about myself, which normally I don't do. It was kind of interesting, but I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, I think as far as the recording, I think I can very easily like cut it off right about there. And yeah, mm -hmm. so, so good to get to hang out with you today. This was so fun. Yeah, it was really fun. I really enjoyed myself. And I think we have a lot, a, a lot of uh, things alike that more than we, um, more than we know, like just the, the things you're talking about with your, um, the, the stories that you like to watch and those types of things. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever read Qu Karen Slaughter? No, I've heard the name enough to know that she writes like what is it like crime fiction or like horror stories? Yeah. Or... So if you like Dexter and stuff like that, mm. but I mean, her, like her books are are pretty phenomenal, but they're, mm. you know, they're dark, but I think we need to really step into the dark in order to really appreciate the light. I think that that's part of it. Right. You know, I so... wonder if that's the, like, does the 350 axis have anything to do with this? Because my rising sign is at zero degrees Taurus. So mm -hmm. like my rising is in three. And oh, really? I'm three degrees. 50. I know. So like you're, are, that's your rising sign too? My rising sign is three degrees Taurus. Oh my God. And your North node is like right there too though, right? My North node is 29 degrees Aries. Yeah. Very close. Oh my God. Okay. So like my rising is like right between your North node and your rising sign. So like, yeah, Pretty much. something like right in there. <laughs> yeah. Very karmic. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh gosh, so cool. For real, keep me posted if you watch Yellow Jackets and like what the hell are they doing over there? I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it, it is it is I don't know. It's like it's really a weird feeling. I have to admit it is like I've never really felt that other than that other show that I told you about. It's yeah. like a really odd thing and I know it's so popular. And um and I mean it's not like I go with everything popular. Right now I'm watching a really cute show uh, called Sweet Tooth. I've, I don't know if you know that one. Uh-uh. -oh. That reminds me of, um, you know, sort of what might happen in 2027, because it really is this uh, post-apocalyptic show about these uh, mutative creatures that uh, are, are sort of half child and half um, something else, like animal. And uh, they are, um, I don't want to, like, if you watch it, I want to tell you everything about it, but it basically, um, they're hunted they're hunted and so if you ever heard raw talk about raves and what he thought they were he, like it was like anybody who knew human design were here to protect them or whatever i mean we don't know how it's all going to play out but it, it really did start with a virus it started with a virus in the sweet tooth thing oh. and uh and i think that i don't know it'll be interesting to see how things play out but right now um you can just see everything uh shifting it's it's very in 2024 i really feel like we're gonna have a sweep of brand new energy like uh, nobody's business so i'm so excited i i feel like the infrastructure for all of that has been clicking into place for years mm -hmm. to like bring yeah. us to the place where we do have the pillars of support so that as all this shit crumbles and falls away, like the real pillars have been put into place. And so yeah. I feel like my, my YouTube channel is one such pillar, my home, my virtual home, like you were describing where yeah. I can express myself here and that's safe and it's always welcome. It's never judged. I mean, there's some rowdy ones in the comments sometimes, but like, this is, this is my space. I can take up space here. And no matter what anybody else is doing out there in the rest of the world, like I have space for me and yeah, having like little pockets like that in our lives, I feel like is one of the blessings that have been kind of coming into place before the shit really hits the fan. So yes, exactly. And I, and I think, you know, before I go, I wanted to mention the one thing that Raw Ruhu said was that when he was in a position where he was away from people and he was able to teach back then, it wasn't like videos. It was like he would do sort of audio stuff. Mm -hmm. He always felt like more of, of himself, like he didn't have to um, allow anybody into his aura to 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 sort of be uh, with him when he was teaching. So he always felt in his place. So he always felt like he could shine more when he was in the position you're in away from people. So it makes a lot of sense that you feel really comfortable in that space and, and, um, and able to express yourself exactly the way you want to. So I think it's, it's, it really 
sort of parallels his experience with how it felt like to be away from people and to to teach with people or to be around people or to be in your own space and do your own thing and to express yourself. He always said he was much better away from people. So yeah. interesting. Dude, I get that. That's such a yeah. journey though of like being okay, being away from the people, you know? And yeah. I'll, yeah. You just need a second line like me and you have no issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> the hermit Dude. in me loves to be away from um, people. It's It's just the way it is. It's been an acquired taste, I have to yeah. say. Like, I don't know if it's like the six three, like the double three. Like, I, I don't know. Like when I was younger, like you were saying about like the single definitions and how, at that point, like relationship is nice, but you don't have to have it. And it made me wonder. Maybe this is like extreme conditioning that, like, it was just such a status quo, like piece of growing up, and like you have a boyfriend or you have mm-hmm. like you're gonna get married because now you're in your mid twenties, like. It didn't feel like a relationship was optional, like how you were describing and how it feels now that I'm like more at home inside myself. It definitely feels more like what you were saying about the single definition. But yeah, like before I was was so severely codependent. It was it's like still such a journey to like. Well, that's the gate 27. That is your that is what you're working with. Um, And you're driven by caring right you're driven by it so that literally is everything and your body um obviously you would you're probably very tactile too i would expect that mm-hmm. you're you're you, mm-hmm. you like to touch a lot because um with the 27 in in your design it, it, it's sort of influencing your body and mm-hmm. having your community but you need your community like the fourth line right you do um but yeah. but yeah like i don't know like i think that for me i i when i was young i just I always just say I'm never going to get married and never going to have kids. Like I was like, okay, to be on my own. Although there was other people doing their things and yeah, you, you date and whatever, you, but it was never um, a destination. I could say it just kind of happened. So I think that is the difference in conditioning. It, mm-hmm. it is. Um, I was, I grew up in a single house, a single parent household. So I think that probably helped a lot, mm-hmm. not helped, but it was part of the the way it was processed. Yeah. But yeah, and and I like my mother's very dependent, very very codependent on, and she's a split. So I see that. I understand why it's the case. She just doesn't feel that completeness, right? And I think that that is a that is a journey. Um, I don't know what it feels like, and um, but I know that it it, it definitely is not an easy journey for a lot of people, yeah. because you're always trying to fill that space in front in in, in between you. Now everybody in our household, except for my youngest son, is is a, a single definition. My youngest my youngest son is a, a triple split, so he's got a really interesting um, journey. But in our family, we all close all his splits, which makes him feel uncomfortable. He doesn't like it all like that, and and that's the funny part about when you get to the triple split is like you get all your splits cl- connected. It doesn't feel comfortable. It feels overpowering. Whereas opposed to if you have just a single split, it, it can feel good. So a triple split is less codependent potentially than somebody who has a single split. So the single split is really the people who have to really kind of look at that energy. Where do, where am I bridging? Where am I being bridged? And kind of um, go from there to start to heal that, to work with that, to know that they're okay in their own entity. And that energy, you can always get that anywhere you, you need to go, but it becomes familiar when you get into a sort of a relationship and and, and they can stay in relationships that are, really bad for them yeah 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 that empty gotta fill it up gotta fill it up man I've poured all kinds of things in there over the decades and nothing fills it up except for like my god my my connection to spirit and yeah that inner connection and that is so new in the story of my life that like the hangover of the emptiness is still still with me at times and still like you know, almost from a protective place, I feel like going through that is a big piece of why I do what I do and why I'm so transparent about like, that's not the end of the story. You know, like just because you feel like that doesn't mean that that has to be like the whole rest of your life. Like something different is possible. It's incremental and it's like one inch at a time, Yeah, but it's possible. 
you know, everything's so. possible. I mean, so. although I'm not going to be an astronaut anytime soon, but other than that, there's a lot of yeah. possibilities. You know what I mean? Sure. We, we have all these things that we can do. And, and I agree with you completely, but you know, you are on in your roof stage right now. So you really are in a place of healing and seeing your life, what you did and what you didn't do and, and taking every lesson that you have. And so you can imagine now this is the best analogy I've ever had to what it feels like to be a sixth line is that so you're zero to 28 you're uh, you're basically um a kangaroo that goes into their mother's pouch and that's when you go in so before that you're not even born when you're 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 born at sort of when you go into the roof at your saturn return and the kangaroo goes into the pouch and that is you on the roof this is where you're fully developing and then and when you come to your Chiron return, the kangaroo comes out and it's 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 grown. Or you could even say you're a, a butterfly. Sorry, you're not a butterfly, you're a dragonfly. And you're, um, you know, under the water, doing whatever you need to do, learning what you need to learn so to survive until one day you cl climb the reed and then you become this dragonfly and your wings sprout and you just kind of fly. And I think that that's a beautiful analogy for what the sixth line really is because you six line energy is really cool. It's like you are under so much mutative force and energy to change, to get what you need to get so that you can do what you're meant to do. But that stops as soon as you hit your Chiron return, you have everything you need, all the tools, all the mutations, everything that you need you're all complete at that point. So now you have everything that's been, you know, changed and shifted and whatever. Now you walk out into the world and you are who you are. And it's going to take time to get those wings to to know how to fly and all those kinds of things. I mean, of course it takes a few, you know, a, a few minutes to to get that new energy, but you are in the most pressurized time when you're in you know, um, the first part of your life. But then once you hit your karma and return, then that's when it just, it, it releases. And if you get all the lessons that you're getting right now, which is wonderful because all this stuff can really help you in your future. Um, it doesn't mean you can't still bloom where you are, like on the roof, you can still mm -hmm. bloom. You can still mm -hmm. do what you want to do. Um, you can still go where you want to go. Uh, it doesn't stop your life. But what it does say is that you are, always shifting and changing and learning and um, being recreated, I guess. And, and I think the one thing that I think is a beautiful thing is that you're not like you're, you're reborn when you hit the state with the roof, you're reborn. It's like, you're no longer that person who you were. You're a new version of you with all those lessons and you can pick and choose what really matters to take with you in your journey. So I, I like that. That's kind of what the the whole uh, roof stage is is uh, in, encapsulated, apparently. So, I love the in the pouch, and the like that the first twenty eight years you aren't even really born yet. Mm -hmm. Like that just like melted something inside of me again. Like the repelling aura. It's like oh, there's a name for it. Like oh, there's a reason I felt like I have no yeah. idea. Like why am I even alive? Like, what is the point of all this random shit that I have to put up with? And yeah, like, there's no point to this. There's no method to the madness. And yeah, like after my Saturn return, it was a lot, a lot better. It like started. Yeah, because it is pretty frenetic for those first, <laughs> like, first couple of years. Sense. It's like, what yeah. is this? Why does nothing work? Like I try and try and try and try and nothing works. And it's like, oh, oh, it wasn't supposed to work. You're supposed to just get that and, piece and go on. Well, I know. And, and that's the hard part because you are just going from A to B to C and not really knowing where it all leads. And uh, and I don't think we always ever really know where it all leads, but we can get glimpses. Uh, it is like it's dipping your hands in the ocean and whatever water droplets stick to your fingers is the information you get. And every time you get a little bit more you know, and that's kind of all we get. And that's what we live in. And, you know, we never know everything, but we know a little bit. And that kind of is what we, we can work with. That's all we can do. So delicious to be here. It's like mm -hmm. being alive. It's like a paradise. And even to just like soak up one little more drop, one little bit of new information, you know, like your little kangaroo analogy. That was delightful. 
And it's well, like, that wasn't mine. That was from Ra Uruhu, and I loved it. I like completely embraced it because it felt so true to me. Yeah. And anytime I have an opportunity to share that with somebody, especially anybody with a six line energy, I, I want to because I want you to know that it is a journey, and and all that stuff is you're just being born now, and mm -hmm. uh, and 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 you're still growing. And I think the the he always talked very kindly about six line and I, six line energies. Um, I think it's because of the flowering. He, he said that it's going to happen, you know, as we move forward. And I think that that it, it kind of gives you the courage to keep moving forward sometimes because, you know, you do stumble quite a bit in the first little while, you know, in your first part of your life when you're trying to figure it out and you're like, what am I doing here? Like for me, I like, I, I was a nurse and then I gave it up and then I got married and then I had kids and that was all, you know, perfect, exactly the way it was supposed to be. Um, but, you know, I never would have expected that I would be right here in this moment doing what I am doing right now. If you had asked me back in those days when I was nursing and, you know, getting married and having kids and all those types of things that I was doing, I would have said, yeah, you're crazy. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's how amazing that, you know, things can just kind of very unplanned and just they flow the flow of everything is I can't believe I'm writing this book I had no intentions of writing a book never not not even close um but I am and uh and yeah 600 pages so far that's how big it is God. it's it's massive that's it is amazing. massive but hopefully it'll be a tool that somebody can take look at your body graph look at this book and get sort of more clarity about what's going on in your life but yeah but the astrology, I never would have ever thought about writing a book or, or anything. It was always just a hobby. But when human design came to me, it was almost like I knew it before I, I actually knew it kind of thing. It just came so easy and things don't generally come that easy. Um, it was just just bang, bang, bang. And I knew the gates and, and it was just so interesting. So it does feel like it's I was on the fractal. And I think you are, too, because. I think it's really cool how our astrology uh, charts, just that little tiny bit, yeah, really line up already. Cool. I know. Like, like I was saying about the 2750, like, I just noticed the more I look at charts of the people in my life, like, there are these little pieces of like, I attract so many Taurus North nodes, I attract so many Gemini Midheavens, like whatever the pieces are, it's like, like I asked you, like, is this, is this the whole path or is this like the chapter I'm on right now? And I really loved your answer of like, this is the part right now. Like that's the energy that you need in this phase. And maybe it continues. Maybe it's something else someday, you know, you just, and, and that's really how it's, how it has been for me. Like, I remember at one point I had so many people who were refle reflector types coming to me for guidance, like so many, like a, a crazy amount. Yeah, And um, so I was trying to help them with their moon cycle. And then I think that the reason they came to me was because then I needed to create some sort of a tool on my channel so that more people could have it to yeah. use it. And then when I created that, of course, yes, more people would be able to go with that. But I had less people coming, the reflector types coming to to me for guidance, which I thought was really cool. So there's all these types of things that it, it kind of is something that's giving you a highlight. OK, this is your new highlight. What are you going to do with it? You know, yeah. that's, that's what it is. So Dude, that just like bloomed in my brain of like, what do they need from me? These gate 50 people, these gate 28 people, like, what is it that they're pulling up out of me? And I don't know the answer to that, but I think I'm really going to enjoy figuring that out and putting that out into the world then. Like they're not showing yeah. over and over. Yeah. But the gate 50 is like, it's a very different gate. It's not like the gate 50 and the gate six are very different gates in that they're not as, as one dimensional as they sound. I think that when you look at like standard human design, the way people present it, they'll say, Oh, like, okay. and it's like, it's like a route. The gate 50 is about values and it's about, you know, laws and things like that. The gate 50 is the father who will protect the kids. And, and, and you look at that and you go, okay, well, that's great. But is there more? And there is, there's a multitude more yeah. because the gate 50 is the center of all intuition. It is, it is, it is literally where all the streams of intuition come out. That is like the initial, it's, it, it is, it is the channel of awareness because 
you have the spleen, which is an awareness center, our most reliable awareness center of all that is connected to the sacral center, which is the most powerful right. energy and motor of, of the whole body graph. So you have powered intuition with that one channel and awareness. It's it's actually an incredible channel. I could talk days about it. And in and, and I've been writing a lot about it. So that'll all be sort of in the book, but it's an expanded version of seeing these things that are and, and if you look at the gate six, which you have, that is the um initiator of all emotional waves. So like the gate six line one talks about a tribal sort of more tribal wave the six line one and line two six line uh, three and four is more of an individual energy of wave that's sort of it it, it gets very complicated and, and, and i i'm not like going to give i couldn't explain it to you in like five minutes because it's 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 very complex but it's really cool so these are like empowering and powerful powerful energies so like once upon a time, I used to think that the the 50, uh, 50, 27 channel was just like, oh, it's tribal, it's defense circuit, it's la la la. But it actually is way more something, there's something way bigger within it than just that. Um, and apparently, if you have that one channel, your immunity and your health is uh, much, much like you're way stronger, like your, um, your health uh, system, your whatever. Um, I'm not articulating properly, but basically your overall health is very good yeah. when you have the, uh, the full channel. So you have less issues with, um, uh, you know, like getting really sick, you have a better immunity. And I, I can attest to that. I mean, that's true. My immunity is actually pretty decent. Um, I, I only seem to get really big things if I'm going to get something big, but yeah. you know, like I said, but yeah, so it, it's a very interesting channel. So the fact that you were so sort of interested in it makes a yeah, lot of sense right there. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to ask you to like say yes, but maybe like, can we loosely intend to like come back at some point <laughs> and like, yes, yes. do a conversation about like, did you call it the defense circuit that like yeah. it's that one is part of just a bigger the defense circuit is, is the 5027 and 659. So all those, oh, so like, like you know, my chart. Yeah. You know, my chart, I have the full defense circuit. So the defense circuit is from a mundane perspective is literally the whole concept of how do we make children? How do we rear children? How do we, you know, continue, continue humanity. Right. But then if you step back, you have, these two awareness centers, right? You have the solar plexus, which is an awareness center, and also the the um, spleen, and they're powered up by the sacral center, which really is, you know, it's a powerful energy. So you have really intensely cool energy over and above the tribal perspective. You know, I think that the coolest part about the whole, and I don't usually talk about this um, because it's, it's it's like a, it's a whole conversation in itself to talk about the body graph and the circuits and how they all run and how the energy flows. Mm -hmm. I mean, but when you see the way the energy flows and how I'm a very logical person, I mean, the 1648 in I, that's like the only thing I have for definition, like you don't have a lot of definition either is I have, I have two channels more than you have the three, but um, I have the, the defense circuit, the 5027 and the, the 596. And also I have the 1648. So for me, the logic of, of um, human design is just like, oh, wow, I just love it. Yeah. And of course, there's a lot of logic in astrology as well, too. Um, so that's why I, I was really in, and I've tried to, you know, read tarot cards and I just couldn't because um, there's no logic that I could grab hold of it yeah. was it's it's all this um divination which i love i think it's really cool but i need to like get my teeth into something logical a pattern of some sort because that's how i'm hardwired and that's why those tools work for me but i i never dissuade anybody from using any tool that they feel is empowering and good for them um i love i i, I just wish i could do all those things like i've taken so many tarot courses just like trying to force myself into actually being able to do the cards and it's like nope can't do it do i can't cards. let go i have to have a pattern but anyhow um yes oh, yeah. i i definitely could come back and you know i could talk about something that i don't know that that is interesting to you i don't know 
Yeah. Um, the that defense circuit and the protective nature and the you know feeling responsible for guarding everyone from all the harm all the time like yeah that is just such a core piece of my my life story and the whole letting go that I want to do but that is what feels like is an exact opposition to letting go and yeah there just feels like there's something that wants me to understand it in this piece and yeah, I if you would be open to that, I mean anytime I would be down. That would be so sure. Fun. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Because the funny part is the gate 50 is actually called the guardian. Mm. Mm. And and the um gates I now I'm gonna I always get these confused, but I think the gate six is the builder and the gate fifty is the is the guardian. So like it, it's a really cool they're intensely cool. Um and and in depth and they're also uh roll gates. Uh, there's there's a multitude of things that you can talk about with these energies and um, I uh, that sounds so fun obviously get too excited about it but you know I I think we could nerd out hardcore about I, I think the the <laughs> cool part is yeah to be yeah. here like I'm here almost nine years already and I still am I I'm as crazy as they get because when I do my like I do my big cleaning day on Saturday I literally put in my AirPods and I listen to Human Design for the whole time, and it, what it does is I hate cleaning, but my body doesn't mind it, so it's my mind that doesn't like it. So that's another thing is just separating the mind from the body and allowing your body to sort of show you where you need to go and and all those kind of things. Um, so my body does the, the cleaning, it's doing all this thing and my mind's happy because it's got something that it likes to listen to. So I'm like, that. it's like a bad kid, you know, you're, you're complaining about cleaning. You know what? I'll give you candy and you can listen to this human design stuff and, right. and you can learn something, right. but you anyway. got to parent yourself effectively. I get that. Well, you kind of do like yeah. the mind can I get, it's just it. like, why do I have to do that? You know? And the body goes, well, like I liked exercise, for instance, I yeah. liked exercise. It makes me feel good. I'm doing all the things and your body goes in, in your mind goes, no, I don't want to exercise. It's like, boring. why do I want to do that? I'd rather just sit here and do this, watch yeah. a show, but you know, so, so oh. that's what it kind of like is anyway, I'm, I'm uh, kind of uh, moving into the the blabbering about a bunch of stuff at this point anyway um it was that's when you know it's good when you can just loosen up and like stream of consciousness you know like not everybody can follow it but like when you're in it that's like my favorite you know where you're just immediate right turn and then like hop over there and like all over the place I love it I personally think it's great and so freeing because you never know what little stone you're gonna land on out of nowhere like I had no idea like this piece was going to come up or whatever so I feel like it's the best way to I don't know kind of let go of control and get lost a little bit and see see what you find oh yeah yeah I I I do have a tendency I will go all over the place and sometimes I go so far out I was like I forget what I was originally talking about all the time I'll go what was I talking about yeah but anyway so yeah Oh. exactly anyway thank you so much for this it was really fun and uh yeah we can arrange something in the future uh you know whatever you think and uh i will uh i would i would look forward to it Great. and come up with some idea of to to talk about but yeah and again anytime you need to have any questions about human design i mean we've had a connection um you know like just shoot me a, a line and i can uh i can hopefully clear it up for you because i think that I mean, you are a six line energy and I, and I do feel like it is my responsibility for um, anybody who's in the six line, who's a six line energy. I feel it's my responsibility to give them the guidance and the tools that they need so that they can be their best self um, to be able to do what they need to do. And, and I think that um, uh, that is something that when people who are six line energies come to come into my, my energy, then it's, it's, it's my job to, uh, to help in any way I can. And uh, so, and, you know, and you, you if you want to learn about your human design and it, it's going to be helpful for you in the future, then definitely I'm going to facilitate that as much as I can. So no worries there. Yeah. It's such a blessing. And all I can hope is that I can pay it forward to others because I do yeah. so appreciate the value of what you give to me. Um, yeah. I, I really hope we do get to do this again and I will, I'll email you and we can chat about that. Sounds good. Oh. 
Okay. Sounds good. And have a lovely day. You too. Take care. I will see you soon, hopefully. All right. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.